Eight people. That's pretty good. <clears throat> Mataka, Justin. No, nah, Justin, uh, Mataka was first. Ellie, Osborne, Lambertson, Avery. Cool. Uh, all right. There was no music today because I forgot my speaker upstairs. So that's that. Uh, whatever. All right. Uh, yeah, so we got some uh, crappy news. So uh, all those times that I said, I really wish that we get to do this in person again. Well, that's just not going to happen. So I don't know. Um, they're making plans. I've started all. I, I've started all my actual conversations for one week. Hey, Anthony or Antonio and Anthony. Hey. Um, so they're making plans now for you guys to get like your, um, personal stuff that you left behind at school. I don't know what that's going to look like or when that's going to happen yet. Um, so yeah. What about next year? What do you mean? Like if, is school going to start in September normally? No idea. Can I do ancient India? Um, write something up and I'll message you about that, Mantaka. All right. Um, yeah, again, write your paragraph up, and if I feel like the paragraph is good and you make a – it's kind of like an argument. So, yeah. So, you know, it's kind of up my discretion. But write, write it up, and I'll read it. I don't see any reason why not. Okay. So, anyway, I don't know about next year yet. Um, you know, if you guys haven't – you know, if, if you haven't figured it out by now um, – you know, like, the, the, you know, no one's ever done this before. So, like, you know, to plan six weeks or seven weeks or eight weeks in advance or whatever, it's, um, you know, it's, it's almost impossible. Like, I, my, my, I have uh, my cousin is getting married in October, October 20th or October 10th, one of those. And they're wondering if they could have the wedding. So, like, you know, that that's, uh, you know. June, July, August, September, that's five months away and they don't know. So, you know, we, we just, we're going to have to see what's going on. Um, we have too much work this week. Deal with it. I, I gave you less ELA work this week. So what, what are you using them? I don't know. No. That, I, as far as the money, Muntaka, I don't think so. Um, that doesn't seem fair to me. Um, I don't, I mean, that, that seems insane to have. No, I don't, I don't think that seems fair in my Personally, I have no idea what they're going to do with it yet, but that doesn't seem right. Redo year or no? No, we're not going to redo the year. You guys are going to go to seventh grade. Cal Brown's here and Lily. Lily, I was changing the background from black to white when you were working. So I was like, oh, man, I may, might have freaked her out. Okay, so let's uh, let's start with this. So cool it with the comments for like a second, okay? And let me do this, and then we'll we'll chat again at the end, okay? All right, so I'm glad about your Minecraft video. Congratulations. I don't know, but just cool it and let me do this. If you have any actual social studies questions, uh, I'll be happy to answer them, okay? So um, this is the second part of the Middle Ages, okay? So the first part of the Middle Ages with the, um, you know, with the with the feudal, feudal system and the manor system, uh, hopefully the video kind of helped clarify what I taught last week. The video that I gave you today with the feudalism and the manor system, it was everybody just scrambled for like protection. Like, oh man, I gotta, you know, I gotta make sure that I'm safe. I gotta make sure that I have enough food. Okay. Um, that system and that like panic didn't last forever. It lasted a couple hundred years, but it didn't last forever. So that early move to the feudal system that was called the early middle ages. <clears throat> and then, um, Right now, and the thing I'm going to talk to you about today is the high Middle Ages. The high Middle Ages is there was still the feudal system. There was still the manor system. But, you know, trade started back up again. People were going from manor to manor again. Um, and things started to kind of develop back into a city. Okay. So, um, it, you know, if you think about it like a metaphor, like now, at the beginning of this pandemic, everybody panicked. You know, they were buying food. They were, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? And now... Things started to open up a little bit, okay? Yes, just cool it with the questions because I see those and I'm so distractible. It's, it's a problem. So um, so first thing in the high Middle Ages is the 
Christian church became became an incredibly powerful force. Okay, so in the absence of like a central government, you know, Greece and Rome had a central government, and Mesopotamia and China had a central government. In the absence of one, with all these little manners everywhere, the church kind of became the government and the religious part and the church. Okay, so. The church became the biggest landowner in the high Middle Ages, and with land comes power, okay? Um, they had economic power, so they could kind of control trade. They had a ton, you know, the church itself had a ton of money, okay? Um, and they also had um, political power, too. They could install kings. Um, they, they were they were kind of both. It's In America, everything is separate. They're separate between church and government. In the high Middle Ages, it was kind of the same. Um, the church also collected taxes. So the church made a big jump to become the government, okay? Um, and also they did something called excommunication. And excommunication is if someone went against the church um, and spoke out against them, did something that, you know, was against the Christian church, a, a person would be excommunicated, meaning that, like, they're literally thrown out of the church. They could not ever be a member again. And when you have a situation where the church was the most powerful, um, you know, was, was the government and the religion, if you get thrown out of that, it's not going to be very good for you. So the church becomes really, really good or really, really strong. OK, so because there was a central government, things started to stabilize in Europe during the high Middle Ages. But the church also kind of became corrupt, too. You can't have a situation where someone is the government and you know, and the powerful religion thing. So there were goods and good things and bad things that came with that. All right. So um, few people would associate with someone that was excommunicated. So um, it was very dangerous to speak out against um, the, the the church. So you couldn't be a religion if you like a different religion. Um, I don't know the answer to that. Um, uh, yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure. Everyone's still panicking. What are you talking? Well, I mean, I guess I guess you're right. It depends on what you pay attention to, but you know, there is some good news eking out, Bridget. You know, you know, you know you're not wrong, but it's still scary. Um. Okay. So during the High Middle Ages, because the church was a stabilizing force, they were the biggest landowner, they were the government, trade starts to kind of get revived again. Okay, so the ancient trade routes that were common during the Roman era, they were starting to come back. And it was now acceptable to leave a manor and, you know, there was the expectation that someone would be protected. Okay, Um they began traveling more. They were exploring different places. You got to remember the people during the high middle ages were not the same people that lived during the Roman empire. So um, if you were born during the middle ages, the chances are you stayed on a manor or something was totally new to you. Okay. So this is hundreds and hundreds of years have passed since the Roman empire. Um, so there was also the thing called the Crusades, which we'll talk about later, which was a war that was fought in the Middle East. And that helped revive trade, too, because people were traveling once more. The Crusades were, they're pretty interesting, to say the least. Um, as trade grows and as trade becomes more common, markets and cities start to pop up again, okay? So um, the high Middle Ages saw a return to that city structure that we learned about in Greece and Rome and Mesopotamia and China, where there were cities and trade centers, okay? It wasn't just a self-sufficient manner, okay? So within a couple hundred years between the early Middle Ages and the high Middle Ages, we saw a return to normalcy, I guess. Um, these trade centers were in convenient places. Um, and of course, with a trade center, you have population growth, you know, people want to live where the goods are. People want to live where it's convenient to live, okay? Think all the way back to Mesopotamia. I said Mesopotamia was a great place to live because it was a crossroads of trade. It was also dangerous, but people still wanted to live there. What's going on? Did, it mean, did the screen go blue? Am I, am I on or no?
there's a problem. Should I end it and start again? If you can't see me refresh out of the stream, I'll stop for a second. Thank you for letting me know. <laughs> it's not my name in all caps. I was like, oh, something happened. Uh... Hmm. Bro, like two of you can't see. All right, I'm going to keep going. Okay, exit and come back in like Bridget said. All right, sorry. I, yeah, I just saw my name in all caps and everybody going nuts. Okay, so um, just to re just to recap what – I don't know what you guys missed and, and um, uh, I don't know what you missed and what you didn't. So high middle ages, trade revives again. The church was a stabilizing force. People began to feel safer. They weren't traveling off the manor. They were traveling off the manor much, much more, unlike the – early Middle Ages where trade was really limited or very uncommon and the manners were self-sufficient. Um, the Crusades, which we're going to learn about at a later time, uh, they were basically wars between Christian Europeans and um, Muslims who controlled the Holy Land for Christians. And that helped revive trade too because... <clears throat> um, uh, that helped revive trade too because people were tra traveling again. Um, high Middle Ages saw the return of cities and trade centers because people were spying and selling goods. And of course, uh, cities spring up around there because people want to live where the goods are and where it's easy to live. OK. Um, all right. So high Middle Ages, trade starting to come back, return to a little bit of normalcy um, where, where like city life was happening. OK. Um, also, the middle class started to get, a th you know, get some power again. Okay, um, during the early Middle Ages, it was really the kings and the knights, and everybody else was like a low class peasant serf. During the High Middle Ages, the middle class people started to return to some prominence again. Um, there was a lot, you know, trade. You know, uh, their economies were based off um, trade again and the exchange of money for goods. And vice versa. Okay, um, with this new economy, a new class of merchants arose, um, and basically they were craft workers. They were artisans. Okay, so before these middle class people would be serfs or peasants, and all of a sudden um, these people had an opportunity to get rich again. Okay, there wasn't really much uh, chance to get rich on a manor because all you were doing was like providing for someone to protect you and growing a little bit of food for yourself or whatever. OK, um, now all of a sudden, when when trade kicks up again, the merchant class starts up again. People could get rich and not have to give all their money or all their goods to a king or a noble or a knight. OK, so we're seeing just the, you know, um, the Middle Ages is really a drop off from normal and then the return to normal again. OK. Yeah, she got a pretty bad sunburn. It was ludicrous. She was laying in the, she had like a blanket and then she was laying in the driveway. I was like mowing the lawn in the back. I was like, you're going to get a sunburn. She's like, oh no, I'm fine. Uh, it, it was pretty bad. I've never, like we, we went on like a beach vacation to the Caribbean when we got married and she didn't get burned this bad. It was like 72 degrees in Syracuse and she did, but shh, totally nothing. <laughs> uh, so Merchant class comes back and guilds come. Guilds uh, start to form. A guild is super important to a middle class person. Uh, it's kind of like a union. So if your parents are um, cops or teachers, um, they might be in a union. A union protects workers. Okay, I'm in a union uh, and it's a great thing for me. Okay, there's a lot of companies that should be in unionized, but they don't. Um, a guild. Um, they're basically organizations where um, people that do the same type of craft or skill, they kind of band together and work together, okay? Unions are kind of like a cult. That's not true. Unions protect common workers. I mean, Taka, if you knew, if you fully knew what a union was, you especially would be for unions, okay? So 
these people, instead of competing against each other, they decided to all kind of work together. Um, unions or onions are a cult. Is it a typo or are you just being weird? Anyway. Um, yeah, definitely not a cult. No, 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 no. This, this is an organization. So a union or a guild. Let me explain guilds and I'll talk about unions in a second. So guilds were ways where workers were protected. Um, you got to remember in the, in the high middle ages, there was no such thing as like a sick day. There was no such thing as a bank where you could save money and retire. It's basically you worked until you died. Okay. And if you got sick, you didn't work. And that means you didn't provide for your family and your life was terrible. A guild was built and, and organized to protect from that. Okay. So they set quality standards for goods. They basically said, Hey, if you're going to be in our guild, you have to do a nice job with whatever you're making. Okay. And if your quality slips and you can't be in the guild anymore, because you know, you, you represent us now. Um, they prevented outsiders from coming into town and selling goods, um, which is great for their business. And um, they protected other family members. So if a person was in a guild that made shoes and someone got sick, the other guild members would help them out and protect them. Okay. So that was really, uh, really important for the common worker. You know, there wasn't a sick day where you got paid, even though you weren't at work, all of a sudden the guilds, they protected against that. Uh, the teachers right now, we have a union and if someone gets sick, the union makes sure that they're paid and they have health insurance. Okay. Um, it's happened a few times since I've been, been a teacher. So it's it's protection for the common worker. Now they're called unions. Back then they were called guilds. Same idea though. Um, it took a long time to become a member of a guild. You'd have to train, you'd have to be an apprentice and work under someone who, who was already in the guild. Um, and oftentimes these tra these people that were training were unpaid. They're, they're, they're basically, their payment was to learn the craft that they were being taught. So it's kind of cool. Um, definitely not a call. Now we're talking about onions and again. Okay. So guilds were really important. Um, this is when we saw the return of the middle class and everything again. Um, on the downside, and this is kind of a drag that I'm talking about this now, the high middle ages also saw a plague. Uh, the modern term for a plague would be a pandemic, which what we're seeing now. Um, it was the um, bubonic plague. Okay. So medieval towns, they grew really quickly. And whenever you have a town grow really quickly, you don't have the time to put in sewers or any sort of type of sanitary system or water. So a lot of these medieval times were just filthy and disgusting and terrible. Okay. It's kind of ironic. We're talking about plagues now. Anyway, these towns grew really quickly and with that comes no sanitation. So just like when you eat something in your room, you leave the plate under the bed and your parents say, hey, you're gonna get ants. Um, imagine that on a larger scale, except it's not you're gonna get ants, it's you're gonna get rats. And so a lot of these medieval towns, they became overrun with rats and rats bring disease, which is why they're bad. And um, so the plague hits medieval Europe. Between 1347 and 1351, one third of Europe died. So one out of every three people. So that's the COVID-19 times 100,000. All right, it's way, way worse, okay? Um, the time period, they call it the Black Death. It's also called the Plague, the Great Plague, Bubonic Plague. It goes by a bunch of names, okay? So the Plague was, you know, just as everything was starting to look on the up and up again, and, and, and during the high Middle Ages, cities were starting to return to normal, the plague hits, kills a third of Europe. Okay, not good. Um, the difference between the plague that we're talking about right now and COVID-19, which we're experiencing right now in real life, is that the plague was a bacterial disease, and COVID-19 is a virus. Okay, so the plague um, right now, people can still get the plague, but it's cured with antibiotics. It's a hospital trip, but it's cured with antibiotics. Um, a virus harder to treat. What's going on here? Who leaves plates under their bed? One of you got. One of you does it definitely.
reading all these. I don't know. You guys are crazy. Anyway, so the plague happens. That's a little, you know, that's the difference between what we're experiencing now. Where it's a virus. So viruses are generally harder to treat than uh, bacterial infections. If you guys have ever gotten like uh, sinus infection or like pneumonia before, uh, those are treated with antibiotics. Okay, because it's a bacterial thing. No one leaves plates under their bed. I'm sure one of you guys did uh, uh, has and the floor, so I can't have plates under my bed. I don't know. You, food in your room that you leave there. I, I, what do you want from me? You guys are highlighting and, and, and isolating a very specific thing that I said and going nuts about it. You don't have a bed. Let's go. Where you sleep in the garage? Yeah, so like Bridget, you said you got pneumonia. So you were on antibiotics, okay? That's a bacterial infection. Cal sleeps on a bed of uh, broken hockey sticks. All right, moving on. Oh, there's a plague doctor. I mean, we're literally wearing masks in public now. So we're like really not that far away from this. And of course, the plague was much more serious, okay? Also, a scary thing about the plague is that no one knew why it was happening. Okay. So like right now we know, okay, COVID-19 is a virus. It's spread by coughing and sneezing on people. And the virus lives on these surfaces for this amount of time. And here's what happens when you get it. And we have the tests and everything. In the middle ages, science was like nothing. It wasn't, wasn't happening. Okay. So you know, you guys know now, like you can't see a virus, you can't see a germ, but germs make you sick. Okay. You know, they could be living on your, you know, they get into your body and they make you ill. Um, that knowledge wasn't really common or never really existed during the middle ages. So all of a sudden you had these people dropping dead everywhere and no one knew why. So there was all sorts of uh, theories about what was causing the plague. So sometimes it was like sinning causes a plague or clouds of poison gas or people looking at you, um, you know, um, you know, like bad thoughts in your head. It's a it, 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 crazy theories. Okay. So at least we know what is causing COVID-19 and we can prevent it. During the plague didn't happen. Okay. All sorts of crazy theories about it. Okay. Um, the, the plague mask and the, like the doctor, this comes from the, I don't know what the bird thing's about, but they had uh, one of the theories about what caused the plague was that if you looked someone in the eye and that person that you were looking at had the plague, you would get it, okay? So eventually they found out that um, it was just caused by rats and if they cleaned things up in the cities then everything would go away, okay? So, but that took a, a long time to figure out. It took a bunch of years. What's going on here? All right. Um, believe it or not, there were some positive, I mean, Frank, you know, a third of Europe dying is a tragic thing. Um, so I'm not going to debate that at all, but there were some positive effects to the plague happening. Okay. Uh, just like after all this COVID is over, I'm sure there's something positive is going to come about it. All right. Uh, I don't know what yet. I mean, there, there's, I, I read some articles about like green technology getting more popular, um, people realizing that the environment could repair itself, but we'll, we'll see, we'll cross that bridge when it comes to it. Um, positive effects of the plague, <clears throat> guilds were forced to admit new members. So, uh, guilds, although they were helpful for the common worker, they also prevented people from joining. And so since one third of Europe died, they had to admit new members and new people learn new skills. Um, surviving middle-class workers could charge more for their labor or services. Um, because of the plague, um, you know, crops rot in the fields and, you know, a lot of food left, you know, was left unprocessed. So people could say like, hey, you know, if I'm going to work, you got to pay me more. So that's another thing, too. It's kind of happening now. Um, there's some people that are concerned about like shortages of meat. It's not that there's like less cows or pigs or chickens. Is that the people that process those things aren't around. So that could be problematic. Um, finally, like construction techniques improved. Uh, people were, you know, it was common in the middle ages to build your house with like a, like a thatched roof or like a, like a, you know, not like a solid material. 
And so people were building their houses out of wood, or sorry, that were building their houses out of wood. They replaced it with brick, and that made it harder for rodents and stuff to get in. All right. So there were some positive things that came out of it. All right. <clears throat> That's pretty much it. So high middle ages, just to recap. Uh, church had the most power. They were stabilizing. They made everybody feel a little bit better about traveling. And that led to the rise of cities again and the, ri and the return of trade. Okay. The um, trade brought back the merchant class. Um, guilds came about because of this. So the common average artisan middle class working person was all, all of a sudden making more money and protected. Okay. Which is really, really, really important. Um, so that's good. What's going on here? You guys are ridiculous. All right. Um, guilds, <clears throat> they prevented outsiders from selling goods. They banded together to make sure that the quality was high and they protected each other. So those are the key things here. Plague, bad, but also some positive effects. So that's the return. All right. So... Classy, bougie ratchet. Great. Anybody like my uh, GIF that I put on Instagram? I thought it was funny. It's pretty good, in my opinion. Uh, so a lot of nonsense here. Miss Mintaka, no. No, 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 no. Are we going to talk about the social studies report? Okay. Um, it's not a social studies report. Okay. So it's social studies topics. Let me get rid of this here. Turn my screen off. Ha. All right. Um, also I know what that acronym is in Mintaka, uh, because a kid last year wore a hat that said that, and then I looked it up. So there, anyway, <clears throat> uh, it's not a social studies project. It's an ELA project. So Krukar or Roth or I is going to assign it. Okay. So this is basically like the third writing assignment. Okay. So you guys did personal narrative or in my class, we did two persuasive. It's like that. Okay. Um, yeah, I have a bike in my bed. I have two bikes in my basement. Actually, this is my gym that I'm in right now. Anyway, so the topic is going to be Lily. Who, or who, who, whose homeroom are you in? I have a TV in my gym. My gym. This is my favorite room in the house. Look, so, okay, check it out. So, anyway, I got actually I have two TVs. So that's my that's my road bike, and there's my uh, weight bench there, and then there's like my pull up bar and stuff, and then we got. And what are you looking at? There's my treadmill and that's my like gravel bike. So it's like my off-road bike. There's my wife's treadmill. And then right here is my elliptical machine. I like working out and exercising. I like, yeah. Okay, so back to that. Lily, whose homeroom are you in? Oh, Roth, you asked that. Okay. So <clears throat> the topic, so ancient Greece, ancient Rome, ancient China, ancient Mesopotamia, ancient Egypt, those are the five topics. Okay. Um, and so that's really all we want you to think about now is like what one you want to do and your teacher will okay that. Okay. There's some that are more challenging than others. And so we're going to find the best ones for you. Um, so next week, so a week from today, we'll give you the outline uh, where you guys take notes and, 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 and do some research. So basically, it's like you have two weeks to do the research and the outline. It's all going to be online, obviously. You're going to have two weeks to do a rough draft, and then you're going to have a week to take the rough draft to a final copy, Okay. Um, we don't know yet if you guys are going to do like a slideshow type of thing, because I'm not sure how to have you present them, to be honest with you. So that's what's going on. How much did that cost? What? Like, I don't know. 
I got work on stuff. The whole room costs more than my brother's tuition. I don't know. I don't know about that. Um, so it, it's it's really not that much work, honestly. You know, <clears throat> uh, the the research part is the most um, uh, labor intensive, and then it gets easier as uh, you go. So once you have the research done, the rough draft basically writes itself. And then once you have the rough draft, all you got to do is edit to a final copy. It's not like back in the day where you'd like, you know, write the rough draft in pencil and rewrite it in pen or something like that. We're just not going to have that happening. So can we leave? We're not going to talk about S. Oh, I'm talking about the research project for sure, buddy. Yeah, no problem. I'll see you later. Um, so th that's pretty much it. If you, what I'm saying to my homeroom, okay? And so if you really want to do something else, so like other than those five topics that I told you, um, like Mintaka is interested in doing ancient India. I think that that would work out fine. If you really want to do something else, another ancient civilization, then, you know, go ahead. We're not in school anymore, Mintaka. You're, you're technically not even in my class anymore. So forget about the futon. It's done. Um, is that clear enough for you? All right. So that's pretty much it. Now, uh, Lily, what I'll say about the research is let's say you and Mr. Roth decide that ancient Rome is going to be good for you. Go back in my Google classroom because you could do a lot of research just from the stuff that I gave you in ancient Rome. And frankly, you're going to know some of it already. So we're going to ask you to talk about like, you know, the government, you know, the inventions, uh, how long the civilization lasted for, uh, you know, that's all stuff that you know already. So my Google Classroom just scrolling back down is going to be really valuable. Um, we are your favorite. We are, are we your favorite class? You guys are really good. Yeah. The whole room costs more than my 36 inch wide, 25.5 cubic foot side by side refrigerator would store more shelves. So you're such an interesting individual. It's 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 uh, that's something else, huh? <laughs> so, um, Lily, I hope that answers your question. But again, most of the research is right there. Um, and once you see the outline that Roth and Krukar and I built for you, the research is going to be pretty easy. Okay, the the, the hardest part is um, just pulling everything together. But we're going to give you more than enough time. Okay. I'm not weird, I promise. I'm not asking you to be, no, normal is, uh, is not real. You guys can just be yourselves. I have a lot of sulking to make up because of this. <laughs> cool. All right, look. So um, and if there's any actual questions about school, I'll answer them now. Other than that, um, we'll wrap up. I, You know what? I got to tell you. Um, when did Cuomo announce the thing Friday about not coming back to school? I think that's what happened. And I got, I got, I got a couple texts from friends of mine who are not teachers. And they said like, Oh, Hey man, like congrats. You're, you're, you're done for the rest of the year or something. And it's just like, I don't, I, I was not very pleasant responding back to them. Oh, happy birthday. Lily. And, um, it's not it's not a happy thing for me, you know. Like, I I think I said this enough to all of you, or at least you heard. Hopefully, you heard it at some point that I said, like, I you know, I really enjoy coming to work every day, and I really enjoy seeing you guys every day. And you know, I, I think my favorite parts of the day were not when we were doing lessons and not when we were doing work, but before we would start a social studies class or at the beginning of the day with my homeroom, when everybody would just come in and just talk and share, okay? And it, it's it's super upsetting to me that we, you know, that we can't continue that. And we stopped so abruptly. And it was like, okay, you know, come in for school on Monday and then not return for Tuesday. It's like, it's crazy to me. And so it, I find it upsetting. And um, knowing that we won't return to class, you know, and you guys won't have social studies class anymore physically, uh, you know, in my classroom uh, or, or ELA. Like, I hope that you guys enjoyed being in my class and you learned a lot of stuff, but you also had fun. 
and you also liked being there. Okay. Because that's the, that's more important than anything to me is that you guys are comfortable and you enjoy school or you find one thing that you enjoy. So I'm, I'm, I'm really pretty devastated that, uh, that we got to end like this. Um, but I can't say it's the wrong decision. You know, I mean, the safety of everybody is paramount to anything else. So uh, I just want to say that. So I would normally end with saying, like, I hope we could do this together soon, but that's not going to happen anymore. So I guess I'll end by saying that um, I, I I really enjoyed having you guys physically in class. And I, and I still really do look forward to doing this, you know, a couple of days a week. Um, and so it, 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 you know, to put it, frankly, it really, it really stinks, but it is what it is. So anyway, um, think about what you want to do for the research project. Okay. Um, and make sure that you get your work done. Mintaka, your question, why do we still have to do something? Because your education is super important. And just the fact that you're here right now shows me that you're, you're invested in some way. So, you know, uh, hold on. I'm just read and I'll, I'll wrap up. This is going long. It's okay. Why do we have to do online school? I just answered that. Uh, I can't be bothered to wake up anymore. Do we have to, why do we have to sleep? Sleeping is healthy. Sixth grade was my favorite year because homeroom class had a lot of, it. I agree. I, I think my favorite week, Mintaka, was the week before uh, uh, Christmas break when you guys did your like teach something projects, and it was just, it, it was really fun. Um, I woke up at, 11, at ten o'clock today, but went to bed at nine. So, so what, you slept for thirteen hours? Yeah, I, I'm not happy about ending here. Uh, March sixteenth, my last social class. Yeah, you know, don't worry about that. Bridget, it's it's all good, you know. It, it's I'm I don't I'm not happy about any of this, but I, again, it's not the wrong decision; it's the right decision. But it's just it's a it's it stinks. In twelfth grade, you guys get to come back and do the senior walk, so I'll, I'll still be there. Maybe I have a little bit more gray hair. My hair's growing back, by the way. Maybe I have a little bit more gray hair, but I'll be there. Um. Anyway, I won't see my sixth grade teacher for the rest of the year. Uh, it, well, at some point, we're gonna have to see you guys. <laughs> And, and, and all right, so, and you guys are in the same building next year, so just swing by and see me. You know, you've seen seventh graders pop into my class at random times. Be one of those people. All right, anyway, um, take care of yourselves. Thanks for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Uh, we're going to do Wednesday on Google Meet, okay? So get the work done. Think about your social studies or your um, research project or whatever. Um Stay safe, stay healthy, stay active, stay engaged with your education. And if you're going to go outside and exercise, do it safely, okay? Um, take care of yourselves, guys. I'll see you later.